John Davies, finds Mrs. Connolly right there when he enters the manor. She welcomes him pleasantly as he has come there to rent her house. He shows his good acquaintance with that area. She takes him in to show him inside. John admires the beauty of the house, to which Mrs. Connolly replies that it is one of the best houses of the 19th century. She shows him the kitchen and tells him that it is quite spacious for a family. John reveals that there is no family to come and that he wants the place, it being peaceful for his writing project. He further tells her that he is a horror screenplay writer, to which she shows her disinterest in such films. Then she takes him to the living room with a wonderful fireplace. While going upstairs, she further describes the house. She tells him quite an unusual thing on reaching the first floor, that there is another renter in the house. John shows his unrest, as he tends to rent the whole house and does not want to share it with some stranger. Mrs. Connolly assures her that Agnes, an old blind lady, would not bother him, as she remains in her rocking chair all the time, staring out of the attic. When they come downstairs, she hands him the keys to the main door, back door, and a shed in the back garden. She asks him to ring her whenever he needs. Telling him to place the keys under the plant pot while going out, she leaves. John visits various places like the mall, the beach, and the back garden. He tries to write by observing his surroundings. While he is there in the shed, a young pretty girl comes, placing the basket of berries on the ground. She starts swinging on a tire hanging to a tree. She falls, upon John's sudden appearance from the shed. She introduces herself as Cassie Conrad. John introduces himself too, and asks her to feel free to knock at his door whenever she needs sugar. Cassie leaves. John enters a room, and finds a little box lying on the table. He opens it. The box opens with music and a dancing doll in it. He closes it, and sees another doll lying there on the bed. He leaves the room. At night, he wakes up hearing the sound of music. He goes downstairs, wearing his nightgown. He finds the sound of music coming from a room. He goes up to it, and turns the music player off and returns to sleep. Suddenly, he wakes up in terror, as he has seen his mouth bleeding in the washbasin in a nightmare. Then, he finds himself drowning, and murder written on the mirror with blood. He gets so afraid, as he has seen that some unknown being has clogged his neck. The next morning, John is making coffee when he finds someone knocking at the door. He finds Cassie outside, who has come to take some sugar. He inquires her about the old woman living there, but she shows her unawareness about any old woman living in the house. When Cassie asks him about his friends and girlfriend, John tells her that he does not have a girlfriend, and that he has rented the house for eight weeks. He is a writer, and he has come there to find a peaceful place to write. When she steps out to leave, John asks her to meet him at 8 o'clock at his place, as they both have shown their disinterest in bars. Cassie leaves, giving her consent. At night, Cassie comes to his house. They talk about various things. John asks her about her childhood. She tells him that she has been a Catholic. On being asked, she further says that she has never rebelled. John tells her that his parents have never been strict with him. He talks about his last girlfriend and confesses that there is always someone's mistake behind every broken relationship. Cassie asks him about his choice of a woman. He tells her that he likes to be with someone whose company would be sufficient for him and that he would forget everything from being with her. Cassie also tells him that she admires only what's there in someone's heart and saying that, she places her hand on his heart. When she goes out to leave, John asks her to be with him that night, but she refuses, saying that she does not want to spoil things by rushing into them. They kiss each other, and she exits. John finds his neck stiff, as he has gone to sleep sitting on the chair and placing his head on the table. Suddenly, he hears the same music as the previous night. He goes to that room, and this time he takes the record off the player and places it in the rack. That night, he has a nightmare once again. He finds himself in an operating theater, and a surgeon picks his tooth out of his mouth. He sees blood in the washbasin again, and murder written on the mirror with blood. He wakes up in terror. The next morning, John is having his coffee when Cassie comes in. He invites her to join in, but she expresses her embarrassment. On his inquiry, she tells him that she does not want him to have any wrong impression of her just because of what happened between them last night. He assures her that he does not think so. Instead, he admires her to let her confusion be discussed. Cassie leaves, promising to meet him the next day. At night, the sound of music wakes him up once again. He goes to that room and finds the record playing, and a covered bottle lies there on the table. This time he lets it play. But when he is gone, John goes upstairs to the old woman's room. He calls her, knocking at the door, but receives no response. When he tries to look into the room through a hole in the door, he finds another eye, staring from inside the room. He rushes downstairs. The next morning, while writing his screenplay, he goes to the kitchen to fetch some water. When he comes back, he finds the same doll lying on the stairs. He seems surprised. He picks it up and takes it to its room, placing it back on the bed. Suddenly, the music box opens by itself and the doll inside starts dancing. He returns. The next morning, Cassie comes to meet him. He tells her about the strange things that have happened there. She suggests that he should tell the owner of the house. Then he tells her that he has chosen to live here, as he is familiar with that place since childhood, and that he has a lot of memories with his parents there. Moreover, he finds himself unable to work peacefully in the hustle and bustle of London. 
Cassie expresses that she has always longed for going to London, but she could not do so as she has been a small town girl throughout her life. John tells her that he has started writing again finally, and it is all because of Cassie. John is sitting at his table, writing, when he feels some object moving in front of him. He rushes behind it, calling Agnes. On moving downstairs, he finds a painting lying on the floor. He hangs it in its place. He goes to take a shower when the door gets locked suddenly. When he has finished taking a shower, he sees murder written with blood on the mirror and blood dripping in the wash basin, the same way as in his dream. He gets stuck in the bathroom. He starts knocking at the door and shouting. The door gets unlocked by itself, and he rushes out. John tells Cassie about the mysterious happenings, and intends to talk to the landlady. Cassie tells him that she would never admit it, even if she knows about it. He doubts his sanity, but Cassie asks him not to blame himself, and to trust his instinct. She asks him to stay with her for the night, but he refuses to say that he will get over it himself. John calls Mrs. Connolly and tells her everything that has happened to him. He asks her about the previous residents who may have noticed anything unusual. She simply denies everything and says that it is all about a writer's imagination. He searches for a Ouija board, as suggested by Cassie. After getting it, he sits in a dark room on the floor. He sets the board and lights up some candles on it in front of him. There are some alphabetical letters written on it. He puts a glass upside down and starts casually without believing in it. He calls the Holy Spirit to help him, but laughs. Suddenly he finds the glass moving. He asks different questions about the strange happenings. He finds out that someone had passed away there. Suddenly, everything around him starts to shake and move, and the candles are all blown up. He rushes out in fear. John takes the axe from the garden and goes to Agnes's room. He breaks open the lock of her room. Agnes tells him that she had an idea that he would find her eventually. She confesses her sin. He asks her whether she had committed murder. John tries to console her saying that everyone commits sins. Agnes tells him that her sin is unforgivable. She touches his face and starts telling her story. 20 years ago, Agnes used to live in that house with her husband William and daughter Catherine. They were living a happy life when her husband got sick. She prayed to God for her husband as she was afraid of being left as a widow, but William passed away. After his passing, Catherine was devastated. She used to remain in her room, playing with her china doll. Her school got affected. Agnes and her daughter grew apart. Eventually, she found a girl and they became friends. She had a good connection with her. But one day, Agnes heard loud noises from Catherine's room. Both the girls were giggling over a boy. When she reached there, she found the girl deceased, as Catherine had pushed her from the stairs. She was a nice girl who had always been smiling. When John asks about her name, Agnes tells him that her name was Cassie Conrad. He remains shocked to hear this and starts weeping in disbelief. He further asks her about informing the police. Agnes replies that she could not put her daughter's life to an end, so she locked Cassie's body in a basement room and papered the wall so that there were no signs of any room remaining there. It was the sin for which fallen angels will take her to hell, as they already took her sight after that sin. At present, John rushes downstairs towards the basement. Mrs. Connolly comes to Agnes's room. Agnes tells her daughter that she has to tell everything to John, as she cannot bear the burden anymore and she cannot take that sin to her grave. She takes her to her bed, assuring her that it does not matter. She eliminates her by pressing her face with the pillow. Then she takes the axe and comes towards John to eliminate him. She attacks him from behind, but he escapes. He happens to eliminate her in his defense. He goes to the basement where he finds the skeleton of Cassie Conrad. A tear rolls down his cheeks when he finds Cassie there. He questions her to make her remain in the dark. She tells him that she is afraid of losing him. John begs her to stay, as he loves her so much. Cassie expresses her love for him too, but she leaves, saying that you have to set your loved ones free. John takes his belongings and locks the door. He puts the keys into the plant pot and sets off back to his house. He has completed his screenplay titled, The Last House on Cemetery Lane. He turns the music player on and goes ahead.